And welcome back to Top Dogs. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about rejection. I am Fiction Boy. I'm Stream Arcadad. And I'm Whiplash Wolf. Before we continue on with today's episode, there is a, an announcement that Kit, our social media manager, has to make. So, Kit, come on down real quick. Alright, so um, I'm Kit, not the social media manager. I'm the community team oh. leader. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm Kit right Clausen. Oh, God. Many of you might know me from the Discord servers as well as our community events that I organize. Uh, I wanted to make a quick announcement. We did post on Twitter and Discord that we were holding a giveaway. Uh, so I want to invite up uh, Blue Dark Thing and Zimbos onto the stage real quick so that they can receive their prizes. Oh, congratulations, boys. Congratulations. So we, uh, we were giving away for their participation on, on Discord and in the community events, we're giving away two free passes to Ferality later this week. So these are our two winners. Congratulations. Don't be camera shy, boys. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 don't be camera shy. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. You two have won, each of you have won a pass to Ferality Silva. You guys are so uh, when you when we wrap up filming, <laughs> I will be giving you the vouchers. Wait, we're, we're allowed to say something? Yeah, yes. you're more than welcome to. You can say something. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't know. Front. You can say something. <laughs> well, I didn't know. Um, I would like to say thank you for uh for the giveaway, first of all. And thank you for... Allow us to have the passes, but um, for me, I'm going to have to uh, decline it. If you've already, I... if you've already got a pass, then you're you're welcome to give it to a friend, so that one of your friends can join you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make a make sure. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're okay. Um, <laughs> um, I, I think that was I think that was it. I, unless uh, anyone else has anything else to add, I would like to say thank you for giving us a chance to participate in the giveaway, and thank you, mm -hmm. um, all the podcast members uh, for helping me along the way while I listen to some of your podcasts. You're welcome. We appreciate your support. It's all mine. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. We appreciate. Turns out these guys are yeah. part of our supporter plus uh, members. Yes, on the Discord. <laughs> We're completely yes. about today, we so forgive it. us. <laughs> <laughs> now, my next announcement. My next announcement. All right. Is Kit Clausen's avatar is adorable. Congratulations. Mm. Yes, there's a lot of new avatars as well. <laughs> I... <laughs> I struggled with it this week, but I finally figured it out. So thank you. Thank you. Looks amazing. <laughs> All right. All Let's right. let them get on to the rest of the show. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you guys for stopping by. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys. But anyways, yes, this episode is about rejection and I will be letting stream take the lead on this episode since he wanted to do this and he wrote this himself with um kofi kofi yes Mm -hmm. So it's an episode. It's so today. You guys better sit down, have a good listen. Uh, we're having another wholesome episode uh, this week. Uh, today we're going to talk about rejection and how to cope with it. Uh, at some point or another, we all had to deal with it. Either we got mm -hmm. rejected, or we had to reject someone or push someone away in our lives. There's ways to do it. It's a delicate. It's a, it's a touchy uh, subject. Um, I know that a lot of people can struggle with that, and it's a hard situation to be in. Uh, both being receiving rejection and giving it. So uh, I might do a lot of bit, a bit of a lot of talking on this episode. Something I'm I'm passionate about as well. Uh, so I'm gonna let you guys answer the questions first, and then I'll answer afterwards. 
So the okay. first question is fiction. What is your definition of rejection? How do you think it affects people emotionally and mentally? Well, we got a lot of cover, I've... so we gotta we'll try to not stretch too much as possible. Okay, that's fine. So I guess if you want me to put it down into a simple term, I would say rejection is being neglected of what you want from somebody or from something. You could, but also how people deal with it, I would say it's different from perspectives because everybody deals with um, rejection of something differently. Uh, I could say for myself that I, I at one point didn't take it very easily, but I think, you know, because of friends, especially Colton, who made me, you know, he helped me kind of realize that, hey, just because something doesn't always go your way doesn't mean that, you know, it's never the end. And there's always another tomorrow. There's always another try. You know, you just got to keep working on doing better for yourself and keep pursuing everything. Even if you failed once, that doesn't mean that it's, you know, gone forever. You can still keep trying again. What about you, O'Flash? What is your definition of rejection and how do you think it affects people around you? Mostly in men <sighs> Well, let's see. This one's kind of one of those like hard ones to answer because I have dealt with it. But it's changed like over my perspective, like from when I used to be in high school versus where I am now. Like, in high school, I would just, you know, accept it and then just try to move on. Now, it would take a hit on my, um, what is the word called? I can't, what's the word called? Like, it would take a hit on my, like, actual, um, pride, I guess. Like, yeah, whatever I had building up to it. Yeah, self-esteem. It would hit, take a hit on that, like, building up to actually ask someone else out. Um, now it's the same way, like, it's, it's still hasn't changed on me, honestly. Like, it still takes a hit on me whenever I try to, but I haven't done it in a hot minute because I've just enjoyed being single. It, at my last, my relationships I've always had have never been the best, but, uh, emotionally, though, it does take a hit on people's, like, self-esteem or takes a hit on, like, maybe something else they may be dealing with. Maybe they've you know, connected with you, and maybe you've just seen them as a friend, I mean, when you try to slowly let them down, it may hit them more harder than if it was just self-esteem. And I've seen that happen a few times, and it's, you have to sit there with them and just talk with them, be like, hey, you'll find someone else, either just stay friends with you, I do enjoy you as a person, and I just am not looking for a relationship right now, or maybe I'm just not in a mindset for one, or maybe just, I have a certain, you know, person I go by, like body type, or maybe person I like to find myself interested in. It, it takes a toll on people, I feel like sometimes, but you can always work it out. You just gotta be very careful what you say and what you do. Yes. I'm not the best at explaining for this. Sure. <laughs> You're good. Well, to me, the definition of rejection is uh, when you want to be part of something, or you have somebody that wants to be part of your life or your social group, but you have to push them away because either uh, you're traveling, you're going away, either they have a toxic personality or they, you have an unhealthy relationship with that person. Either they will reject you because they w don't want you in your life, in their life, or you don't want them in your life. It can, go, it can go in a lot of different ways, and it can be very emotionally devastating for some people. A lot of people, they struggle with something called abandonment, uh, uh, abandon, um, abandonment issues. Abandonment uh, issues, yes. Yeah, abandonment issues. It's actually something um, my husband kind of struggles with, because he's lost his father who, when he's young. He, his mother kicked him out when he was young. Well, so the fear of being abandoned is something that you know, dawns on a lot of us. So when you're in a situation when you need to, you know, move, remove somebody from your life for whatever reason it is, it's really, it's it can be very delicate and it needs to be done right. It needs to be explained well, uh, right. I just had a situation last week actually when I had to push somebody away. We'll get to in the more details in the other question that I ask, but to me it's just removing somebody from their social life or being removed from. Somebody my strongest definition i would say uh, so one thing which is i would say sometimes us removing or rejecting the person from our lives 
um, is not because we don't want to deal with them, but sometimes it's because we still care about them in the end. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a necessary sometimes it's, evil. You have it's to a necessary this. evil. Yeah, it is a necessary evil that sometimes that we are not comfortable with a decision that we can make, but it's for the right reasons and going forward. And, and possibly it could be a good decision for them as well. Maybe the more you step back away from their lives, the more they maybe actually take back or like step back and take a look, maybe reevaluate what they're looking for. Yes, because somebody that gets constantly rejected or pushed away, it's not the others that are doing something wrong. It's you. And you need to figure out what are you doing for people to push you away like that. You need to do a lot of introspection. Finding a certain peace inside you can help. Uh, for me, meditation helps me a huge lot. I do have AD, undiagnosed ADHD. I have the symptoms for it, but I'm pretty sure I have it. And to me, meditation is a good way to try to recenter myself, refocus, and consider all the action. Maybe some of the things I've said or I've done could have offended people. Um, so yeah, it's something that be, it's very delicate, but sometimes what, you gotta do it. Speaking of, speaking of meditating, um, what is, I mean, I have my way of meditating, which is I would listen to, to white noise. Like, like when, especially mm -hmm. when it's like around bedtime, I like to listen to rain or those type of yes. noises because it sets my the mind white at ease. white noise and it's so loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he, um, so funny story. He did, I have a way of sleeping and I have a way of calming myself down, which if I have anxiety, I will listen to this noise. He heard it from my phone while he was sleeping in the living room with me. And it, he said, he said it was too loud, but I was like, this is not in the me. same bed, but oh well. <laughs> it is pretty, like, so I always listen to <laughs> thunderstorms. Uh, gentle thunderstorms, rolling rain, and stuff like that when I'm going to sleep. It really calms myself down, but it also uh, mutes and it raises the noise level so that other ambient noises are not distracting. Uh, but the way yeah. I do meditation is I have, uh, they are 10 minute long guided meditation series. And you don't have to think or anything. You just have to listen and do what the person is, is telling you to do. It's 10 minute long. You do it every single day, and me for after like four, three, five days, I can notice I have better focus. I remember names better. I'm more concentrated into what I do. I appreciate my time that I spend with people a lot more. So it's very beneficial, and it allows me to think too. Like, well, why is this person mad at me? What happened? It, what is the possible thing that I could have done wrong? And then I walk up to these. I'm like, is it because I did that? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry for that. You still want to be a friend or you'd rather take a break? And like, I'm going to wait it out for now. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then sometimes they want to be. So, you know, if you find that a lot of people are pushing you away, maybe you need to start thinking about yourself. What is the action? What is the energy you're putting out? Because sometimes you could be doing nothing bad at all, but you have like hateful discord or telegram statuses saying that you're angry or you're this or you're going through that. This is, it backs up what I'm saying that you should always stay neutral or positive on your social media. First of all, by doing that, you avoid drama. And two, you're putting out a nice positive energy and people will naturally gather around you and show people that you care too. If you're always talking about yourself, nobody will want to listen to you. So ask them question, hey, how was your day? What is the thing you like doing? You know, so and show interest in people and they all show, they will show interest back and then you'll see that you'll feel welcomed into it that will be rejected. So think about that. Um, mm -hmm. So fiction, what is your personal experience with rejection? What were the circumstances and how did you feel at the time? Well, there was many rejections that I have been through. And it is hard to really think about them, only not because I don't want to. It's just more like, it's like a blocked memory that I have in my head. It, does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. But if I was to remember anything, like from a, maybe from a something, not really so much a person. But I was recently rejected from receiving a certification with cloud essentials which was one of my final exams to get a certifications 
However, the score I needed was two points off. And even if I emailed them, and I did, they still said, now you have to meet this number in order to get your certification. But it was just by two points off. And that really sucked because I, I feel like those i can understand like maybe 10 points you're off but if you're like just like maybe a point or two off i feel like they could you know give me a little bit of leverage on that because i so studied dealing... my butt off yeah yeah so you've been dealing with professional rejection all that yeah professional rejection it was very frustrating especially when you like put so much time into like studying the material you know throughout the whole semester and to come that close to getting something that would help you uh, look good in a resume or, you know, furthering your career or academic career as well, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Whiplash? Uh, what I is mean, your um, personal experience with rejection? Something you remember vividly? Do you need to time to I, think about it? I can always uh, say something. No, oh, I. It's like I remember, like back in high school. That's about it. Because ever like once I got out of high school, I like didn't really look for like a relationship that much. Honestly, now I had like maybe one. I had like two or three relationships after I got out of high school, which was ten years ago. And usually those were people who actually got to know and got to actually like, and then we kind of hit it off, and then it exploded into eternity but my rejection was mainly just like i was rejected like so much in high school and back in high school i wasn't like the most fit kid i was like the nerdy kid that was big, big that was round that wore glasses that wore plaid shirts had short like slick back hair but you have against plaid shirts <laughs> i love wearing i used I mean, I did I'm too. Sorry, I used to wear the, <laughs> I used to wear the <laughs> crap out of them. But I love. Them. I guess like with like how much rejection I took back in high school, I thought like everything was like based on looks or based on personality. Which to be fair, I had a personality, but it wasn't like the personality that I have now. I was a very introverted like kid in school. It sucks. But from, like, then to now, I mean, especially back in 2019 or 2020 is when I, like, started to, like, change mentally to be this person that I am now. But then I didn't really, like, try to go after people or try to go date someone because I just thought, like, even if I'm trying to better myself as, like, a person, like, just not on a physical standpoint, but or healthier or trying to be more open or out there with people, just... I wasn't going to, like, try to, like, play it. hey, I'm a hunk now. Maybe I'll get more people this way. And, and, oh, I'm bisexual now, so maybe I'll get more people that way. No, I just didn't really care to go put myself out there because of how much everything back in high school, like, maybe just thinks, like, it's not going to really work out with anyone if that's the case. And now I just got to the point if I actually get in a relationship with someone, like, the chances of it actually, like, working out are, like, slim to none because... My love was like dropped to the ground and kicked so much that now if I even get with someone, I feel like that puppy love section for a month or two and then it just goes. It goes away and then all I feel is just like friendship for that person and it sucks because I would like to have a significant other, but <laughs> it doesn't seem it's to never going to happen at the moment. Well, maybe you, know, come you never know. The life is full of surprises. I wouldn't. I mean, coming I from a guy, never. Coming from a guy that did go to high school and was the popular jock kid, I can tell you one thing yeah, right now: those here. things, <laughs> those Jesus. things. I, I'm being serious when I say this, but I'm just letting you guys know. Coming from that background, it was not. You don't even remember all the people that you talked to. I only remember one person that I talked to in high school. So. All those things, those memories you built were good, but they are they're not there to stay. All the, those people that I knew in high school moved on. So, was is it worth being popular at that time? Probably not. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. It's actually funny you because can't put that last on night your resume. 
I was actually oh, going to do like the, the community night <laughs> with uh, I was going to do a community night with our you know guest line or with our group last night, but I had a friend from high school actually message me and, and call me on messenger saying like, "Hey, are you going to come to this event?" I'm like, "What event are you talking about?" He was like, "Oh, it's the 10 year re high school reunion." No. Nah. And I just I just kind of sat there for a second and looked down and was like, "It's been 10 years already." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it's, had that it's about up. to be 10 years for me. It's in a couple more years. I graduated in 2015. Oh god, when he told me that, I'm like, oh god, now we are like, now we get our complimentary old people walkers because we're just getting there. <laughs> I gotta fly all the way to it's, South Carolina to, to go do the my high school reunion. Luckily, I have family that are still there, so I could possibly do it. Hell yeah. I mean, I enjoyed going to it. It was nice seeing people I haven't seen in years, but at the same time, it's like those same group of people that I talked to in high school, I never actually like really interacted with them after high school ended. Like I found a new group of friends like five, six months after high school ended, and I've been friends with them for 10 years now. I've known them ever since I got out of high school. So, and they're also furries. So, I got lucky with that. Actually, I never. I know. I know we're on this little. I know we're on the. Something. This is completely off topic. If it's fine, dream. As long so, as, if it's a short blip, it's fine. Yeah. So, you guys. I think you guys met my friends, but not Andreas. But my friends, I live with where I live at. The only reason I know them is because I used to be a brony back in the day, right? I used to be the person who made fun of them, and then I saw a clip on YouTube, and I was like, you know what, what if I give it a try? And then I started liking it. <laughs> so I became one of those people to like the show. Like and Colton. I have a few friends like he, that too. You guys, like Colton, he, he hated on the bronies too. <laughs> yeah, look at him over there. Being I have a lot now. of friends that are ABDLs on my end. I'm not one. I've been a caretaker for a few of them. It was really respectful, but I'm not really one. But when they asked now, well, whatever. Yeah, I had an but... ex-girlfriend that made me watch it, the show. So I was like, so what happened this. though is I had a pony like lanyard on, right? And this guy, we were at a car show, and this we walked past this guy, and he just said, "Hey, nice lanyard." And I was like, "Hey, thank you." And the people I was walking with, we just kept walking. And I kept looking back, you know, and I told him, like, you know what, I'm gonna go talk to him for a bit. And we did. And we got, I went and talked to him, and we talked for like 30 minutes to an hour. And he was like, hey, do you want to come to this meetup we have on Saturday or Sunday? I was like, sure, why not? And it was at our local mall, and we went there. And then I met, <laughs> I met two of my other friends that. Now, since then, though, I've been friends with them ever since that moment. It's just so weird how life can work out with you and your actual, like... Oh my oh, god, stream! Uh... <laughs> stream is... stream is back. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, uh... It's weird how life can work for you sometimes, with friends. Hold on a second, we're getting feedback. Jefferson, we need you to meet your mic, please. <laughs> Testing one, right, two, are you three. Okay, there, Thank you. Stream, are you stream? Are you all right? Or are you trying to take care of uh, your puppy there? God damn it! My headset died. Oh, oh, that's always fun. Okay, well, continue on as you were saying. No, that was like the main part of it. It's like. I guess I was kind of like making like make fun of like My Little Pony because the you name of the show was Friendship is Magic and yes it is. <laughs> uh, because because that show I... though, it's mainly because that show though is because I have my friends now. Like of course I have you guys right, and, but these guys I've known since I was 18 years old, which has been a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I've only kept up with one, like I said. Are you? Oh no, he's dying too. Oh no, am I gonna have to run the show on my own? Oh no, <laughs> I'm not dying. It's in my trackers. My God, I've actually already had one tracker. <laughs> Everybody's having tracker issues today. Trackers? Oh, well, no, he's having. You were having trackers. He's having headset issues. 
Trackers don't like cooperating. I swear to God. Um, I already have one tracker. I have one tracker that doesn't want to work anymore. Ever. It doesn't hold a charge anymore. Um. I cannot. You got that nice um, Arcadat <laughs> ass in your face. <laughs> um. Yeah. And I don't think he <laughs> even realizes that he is. Um. Putting all that cake in your face. No, no, well, never mind. He is getting the boiler. Uh, he's getting the floor pregnant. Okay. But anyways, that's what I was saying. The Roomba. Now. As we continue. <laughs> well, yeah, Roomba. he's a Roomba right now. But as I was saying, anyways, guys, if we're going to continue on with the conversation with rejection, you can continue on unless you are done with it. Uh, with what you needed to say. I'm done. We can definitely continue on with what. Uh, I would we say. Can start with. But since he's having some difficulties, I'll try to keep this going. Uh, what do you think? Well, let me say this. What was probably the worst way you got rejected? <sighs> that one is a good question, actually. That is a really... Yeah, definitely a... Well, well I guess when it comes to like, the rejection... Like, okay, we're talking about, like, relationship re rejection. I'll see all of them with the I same. mean, you can consider you can consider personal or, you know, professional, anything. These kind of perspectives. Um, I'm actually about to say I, professional. <laughs> I'll go ahead with yeah. professional. Yeah. I mean, there was a job I really wanted to go for. I mean, I finally got it. And then I figured out that desk jobs weren't my, like, quit, like critique. I can't do desk jobs because it mentally drains me faster than doing physical labor. But I finally got it, but I got rejected like three or four times from this position. And usually when you get rejected that many times from a job, you just think emotionally wise that you're never going to get it. Whatever you do is never going to work. But you have to push yourself past those thoughts that you have to work yourself over. Just like if you go to... Um, like if you take it, have to take a test for it, or if you have to go, if you get called in for a, you know, interview, you just have to keep in mind like what you said at those interviews or what you did on the test beforehand and just rework what you do. Just rework what you say. Mm -hmm. Remember the questions they ask you and just make yourself better. That's how I did it. That's when I got my job. And then I quit like 10 months later because I gained a lot of weight during that time. <laughs> Fair enough. I would say I, th I think it just depends on the perspective of what is the worst projection towards people. Yours could be professional or it could be more personal. I think for me, at least, uh, I would say like if my which I never had this experience before, if I was rejected from my family because of uh, sexual orientation, I feel like that would break my heart more than anything else because it would suck to go through a situation where the people that you're supposed to go to for mental and you know you know mental support, uh, physical support, whatever, all the types of support that you can think of, and they're not there for you. I think that's what sucks the most because you know you trust them with everything. And that they cannot be with you just because of one thing that you believe in. Or you believe in yourself. And I would say, you know... Fortunately, I was not in that, that situation. Because that would mentally affected me. You know, not having my mother be there for me. Or my dad be there for me and stuff like that. And you can probably definitely relate to that now with Plush. Since you have a family that did accept you. And you went through life for the longest time. Not knowing um, if they would or not. That, that is very true. Well, I will say this, like my entire sexuality I should already told you what happened. But I feel like anything that happened with me got stunted with something that happened when I was younger. But even like my high school friends, when like when I was talking with them last night, and I finally told them like, hey, guess what? I'm actually bisexual and they were like, Finally you admit it. <laughs> Oh, so they saw it a mile away before you did. <laughs> Obviously, like, they saw it seven years before I saw it, but mm -hmm. it, it's, the, it's the thing, like, maybe something in life, like, keeps you back from actually coming out. Like, if it's not your parents or, like, let's say what people may think of you, it could be something else that caused you from doing it, like it did with me. Like, I finally came out about it because... 
it finally like hit me that you know what I am actually like I actually do find like guys attractive so I started finally like coming out to my friends and then another two years later I came out to my parents because you know when you come out to your parents it's always going to be the hardest thing to do because they're the ones who like take care of you from your birth all the way until you move out of the house and usually they try to set a motive or set a set a path for you in life and sometimes it could be for religious reasons or it could be for what you want to do or like maybe a mixture of both and sometimes it may not work out which is what unfortunately we've seen with some people and usually that's like the more religious side of aspects unfortunately mm. or usually like my parents and stream streams parents and fictions parents they're very they will still you know love us no matter what we are because we're still their children they took care of us they want us to be happy for who we are which is it's a wonderful feeling, honestly. Like, it is, like, weights off your shoulders. Like, once you tell someone something like this, you feel, like, invisible weights. Like, you just feel, like, more relaxed. You feel more energy and feel just more happiness, like, flowing through you. It's like, this has finally gone. I can finally, mm -hmm. like, be myself around people I love. Unless yeah. it's, like, your friends. Because obviously your friends will always be there for you. Yes, of course. Well, anyways, I was going to ask another question, which would be, have you ever rejected someone? If so, what was the reason? How did you do it? How did it end? Oh, uh, that's... Uh, be fair, like, you don't have to name people. <laughs> I'm not going to. There's too many people to name. Ever since I became like this, like, I hate saying this word because I don't like feeling it that way. I guess ever since I came to this content creator that people just know because of the videos and the podcasts and streams I do, I've had quite a few people try to like come up to me and like say they like love me and not just like, you know, in a what I do sort of way, but in a actual relationship way. Normally my first question would be like, I'm not trying to be a complete, you know, when it comes to this case, but I'm like one, I don't know you. <laughs> Two, if this is the case, I would like to get to know you more. Three, I'm also not dating people because of personal reasons and just bad past experiences. And usually, like, they will take it with a grain of salt, or sometimes they may go depressed, and then I'm like, look, I'm sorry, but it's just my reasoning behind it. There's no, like, there's no, like, um, tension between us. I'm still don't mind being your friend we can definitely still do that because i try to be like with when it comes to anyone and everyone i try to be like someone they can relate to or just like talk to whenever they want to i just try to be a friend to anyone and everyone because i rather not be that person's like oh well look i'm i'm not just like a tracker's that. friend that's for sure <laughs> but i try to be like a friend to anyone and everyone and it's it's just kind of hard sometimes, but... You go ahead, stream. I'm going to stare at my tracker. I, well, I was going to say okay. something, too. Well, I, I just... Was gonna... Wait, wait, wait. Before you start, I just missed, like, five minutes because my goddamn headset killed itself. <laughs> Not we are on the... Um, we're um, on the question of itself. one thing. We're on the on question the, of... Have you ever rejected someone and how, how did it go and how did it end kind of thing? So that's where we're on. Oh, yeah, I have an excellent story concerning that, actually. I was going to say mine, So you too. guys did all the other thing? Do you feel of being rejected and everything? Yeah, we did that one. Okay. Uh, why yeah. do you think other people... Okay. Uh, this so, sucks. I really want to answer. So, what? I w if you want to go ahead and just say it. Okay. If I fear being rejected on oh man, I don't really fear that as much. The only person I would be scared of feeling rejected would be my husband, you know, or anybody I'm really close to. But generally speaking, I know that not everybody is meant to get along. We're not meant to all be friends. We're not meant to, like, all be super friendly and have a good time. There's going to be friction sometimes. There's going to be a situation that happens, and sometimes your road will pathways their own separate ways, and that is perfectly fine. Um, 
I like to bring back the analogy of the tree uh, where you got this tree with a lot of leaves, branches, and a truck. And most of the people you're going to see are going to be like, uh, there's going to be plenty of them, but the slight gust of wind, they'll fly off in a distance. That is okay. Let them go. There's other people you're going to be a slightly closer to. They're like branches, but with a strong enough gust of wind, they will break and fly off away. And you should let them go. But the people that are really worth fighting for are the people that made up the trunk and the root of your ch These are the people mm -hmm. you might fight for and try to understand what is going on. Try to give them some space if they need to and then come back to it and try to resolve the situation. But it's bound to happen whether you like it or not. It's and an it, interesting it saying the that yeah. you're comparing some people to branches because or leaves. Like, it made me think like, well, friends come and go, right? So do leaves and branches. Yes, so do leaves and sticks. They still come yeah. back and and new new branches will grow and new leaves will grow as well so it's not the end of the world you're still there and, and people come and go so don't take it personal if somebody decides like to cut ties with you it it happens it happens every, every single day um which would lead me to the next thing uh did you have to reject somebody and yes i did recently i had to cut tie with somebody um, I've tried giving this person um, help, I've tried to give him advice, he got banned and kicked out from different areas and servers and stuff like that. But he's never really done anything bad to me and he never actually crossed the line was I, where I was actually about to tell him to stop. Uh, he always kind of followed, but eventually he, he did actually cross over this line. I came up to him like, look, I ask you to not do this. Please be respectful. The name of the person is not relevant here, but it's the way we proceeded. And he got pretty much abandoned by everybody, but he didn't do anything wrong to me. So I was like, oh, I'll stick around, you know. This person is trying to learn something, try to get through stuff in life. So I'll give him help. But after, like, trying to help this person, I gave him tools on... Because I told him, like, look, I can give you the tools to, so that you can build... A a better social life, a better friendship with people, but you're going to have to build your own. I can give you the tools, but you got to build. And after giving this person three times the tools and he just discarded them completely, I gave up. And this person was like trying to be friendly, trying to talk to me every single day, but I'm sorry, but I don't have time for small talk on Telegram. I'm, f I, I have a lot of stuff going on i have my business i have a drama play coming up friends and family it's summer i'm talking with people so i sadly don't have time and the people i want to spend time with are people that i actually share a mutual bond a mutual relationship i was just friendly with this guy uh maybe he saw me as a branch but i saw him more of a leaf um and it's okay there's nothing wrong with there and at one point i had to cut it off i'm like look man i cannot take care of you anymore you need professional help I'm not the one that is going to give you help you all because I've tried and I've honestly given up. I'm really sorry. I don't hate you. He thought I was pissed and mad at him. I'm like, no, I don't hate you because I understand what you're trying to do. And to me, it makes perfect sense. It's upsetting. It's frustrating. But look, I want to break tie with you. Uh, I had to block him on Telegram at some point. And then I told him, look, I blocked you on Telegram for a month. I promise I will unblock you till then, but we need to cut ties right now because you're taking up too much of my energy. It's starting to affect me negatively and it's starting to create anxiety and I feel bad and I feel guilty because I feel like I never do enough, but I know this person will take up all the energy that I will give him and even draw even more. And I, I had to cut it off for my own mental health. So I had a really healthy conversation with them. I stepped down like, look, I'm not mad at you. And I explained this really clearly. I'm like, look, I cannot help you anymore. I've tried, tried, and tried, and you're not listening. I know somebody in my close friends that were struggling with the same issues you were having. He listened to me by the letter, and he has a very, very successful social life. And I, I did give a few advices at the beginning of the episode. You know, show people that you care. Ask them questions. Find out stuff about them before, stalking, before starting to talk about your own. Because um, honestly, most of the time, people won't care. We like to talk about ourselves, but if you want people to, you know, show interest in you, you got to show interest back. It will take a while before you get anything back, but trust me, it is worth it. But yes, this is the most recent thing I had to do. Just cut it off. I'm, I'm, you guys probably know him. You've actually probably met him, but I, I had to end. Hopefully he figures out stuff. He gets help and he gets better. We'll see what life I think has I'm aware in store for him. Is. I hope... 
You might have a guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, I only wish the best for this person. I truly, I truly am. Like I'm, okay. I'm really hopeful he'll figure it out. I understand who it is too. Right. Like it, I do hope the best for them. But before we continue on, guys, I was gonna say, you know, we hit that mark. So. Oh, I'm going to be saying this. So please do subscribe to our Top Dice channel. Uh, we give out a notification, which is the bell. And that notification bell, it will tell you, it will notify you with each video and short that comes up. And another thing that you guys can do is subscribe to to our audio platforms you can find these audio platforms in our link tree and <laughs> and including our own personal social media platforms and other things as well if you don't whiplash is probably going to do a jaws <laughs> reference dun, 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 he's just like he's dun, literally dun, dun, crawling dun, dun, just dun, his head dun, dun, on the dun, floor like dun, dun, side dun, dun, eyeing dun, dun. us as he's moving laterally it's so funny <laughs> <laughs> we'll make this a wholesome one this time Make sure to follow us on all, all our social medias, and if you do, I, I will take you for a ride in my car, which is on the back of this shirt, actually. Papa, do it. Do it, and you'll go for a ride. Do it. Do it. Do it. It'll be a fun time, I'm sure. I want to get on the car. <laughs> I want to get on the car. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind taking you guys kind of that. that. Yeah. That creeping over the hair. floor with the side eyeing, like, looking at us, going towards the camera. That is your right. car. Holy crap. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I became anyways. So, calling out to all of our Top Dogs fans, uh, you want some cool stuff? You can by subscribing to our service subscriptions on Discord. You cut a uh, become a podcast supporter today. You get r exclusive raw and uncut footage of your favorite podcast episode. Join supporter meetups and talk with other podcast supporters and the team. Plus, get a custom-made pie emoji and other goodies that come with our $2.99 a month subscription. But wait, there's more! Upgrade to the Podcast Supporter Plus and you get episode voting, supporter feedback, live audience participation for only $5.99. You also get a sneak peek of upcoming ideas, merchandising, and more. You don't have to join these subscriptions, but it does help us out tremendously. And the people that do out there, thank you so much. And you don't have to do much to support us, just listen to the podcast share with your friends and let's all have a good time together thank you guys so much for your support we love you all and now back Absolutely. to giving back and now it's time to get back to the whole anxiety thing about you know well not anxiety what am i talking about rejection so we can give you some advice of what we went through and how you guys can probably learn from you know from us for how we deal it now everybody's perspectives is different you know, all these two have different perspectives on how they handle their own rejections but with me i will you yes. took a picture of a your picture back. Of his back so we can share it. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. But my anyways, back is my greatest assets. <laughs> <laughs> That's my greatest assets. I mean, my greatest assets, assets. is my assets. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the assets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can't get enough of that assets. Anyways, hey, we we gotta. Move. We gotta sparkle some little funny moments here. And there. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. I'm not denying sense. that. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> denying that at all. Okay. Absolutely. Of course. But with me, I would say not that I'm thinking about it from a personal standpoint. There is one that comes into mind when I did have to reject somebody, um, not in a relationship way, but I re rejected being their friend anymore because we had a good run for like since. Let me think. Six years? We've been friends for six years. And it was great in the beginning, but down the road, they were just not the same person I once knew. Like, I did try to reach out to them. And, you know, they claimed to be my friend and stuff like that, you know, that kind of thing. But they never... I think what sucks is that I would understand that they were busy all the time. But they never really made time to hang out with me. And that's what sucked the most. And I just oh, didn't I feel like at that point they were my friend anymore. And they are... And, I, and if they are watching this video, because I know they probably will over time, they know who I'm talking about. I had to end a friendship with them on Telegram, which I'm, I'm not so happy about. I kind of wish it was done under a phone call. 
but real possible. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I just didn't want to do it in a telegram communication. But I ended the friendship because I just didn't feel like they were really my friend anymore. Just because they didn't really make time with me as their friend, especially when I knew they were doing other things with other people, they just weren't making time. And I think that's what upset me the most. Yeah, I understand they, that. They, for they sure. made time. They made time for their for, friends, but not you. And say, like, okay, so I'm guessing I'm coming second now, or third, or fourth, whatever number I am. Especially six years if I've been your friend, and these people are new in your lives. And I get, I get it. Having new friends are exciting and all, but when you, mm. I think when you reject the people that were there for you in the beginning, especially when they've done things for you a lot and it starts to hurt when they are not you know they don't get that I think that's what hurts yeah. the most and and I knew somebody you know that I'm still close with right now that luckily I still consider him a friend but I hurt him a lot and I regret it every day and I'm hoping you know with my changes of behavior that maybe he will change his change his mind one day. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, because I'm learning from them. You know, after you're you know, making not effort. being, you are making, you're recognizing that you're doing something wrong, and you're trying to make up for it, and you know, you you know, you're trying to change something. I know you you reach out for me for advice for a bunch of things, not in this yeah, situation, but other things. And you're willing to make the effort advice. and change. That is good because it takes. You need to step on your ego if you have any, and like accept the fact that like I'm doing something wrong. I want to learn. I want to get better at it. And it takes mm -hmm. a lot of strength. It takes a lot of courage. But you're gonna benefit it in multiple ways. And so I'll give you kudos for that. I the person yeah. though, if but sometimes the other person could have been hurt to a point where there's no return. So, so oh, sadly, if it doesn't work out, you're just gonna accept. I'm gonna have to accept this fact. It it sucks. It hurts, but I I hope for the best. I wish for the best on this. I know it just. Like, us. And I've, I'm thing, aware that I have hurt them in the past. It's yeah. just more of the. If even if they may not believe in me, I still believe in myself <laughs> to like make the changes because of my mistakes. You know, not just, you know, you know, for them, but also for me. You know, there's a lot of people that talk that that's not concerning you specifically, but a lot of people talk that they want to make, want to change, going to be better. Reminds me of a, of a saying of, yeah, I've, I've heard a saying on TikTok, which I really thought it was lovely, but do you guys know why talk, why dogs don't talk? It's to remind mm -hmm. us that actions speak louder than yeah your actions speak louder than words i got that exactly so don't only say you're gonna make an improvement make the and it's not mm. easy it's really difficult to fix one of your faults you know it, it takes a lot of effort perseverance and you keep going and going at it if changing yourself to become a better person would be easy everybody would be perfect and we're not oh yeah I would say, so, you know, my when the reason why I hurt them is because I took what I said a little bit too casually and didn't consider how they would feel. So now learning from that, I had to definitely be careful what I say because, you know, and take, you know, yeah. not just not just casually say, you know, these things. Especially these are big sayings to a lot of people. And some of these things could be life-changing kind of sayings. If you say these things, you, you better mean it. Because if you don't, and they figure that out, that was not true. It could definitely affect them mentally. And it could affect your relationship with them in the long run. Now, I still have hope that it can be all fixed again. But it's going to be harder. Yeah, well, because if you don't put up to your words, then you become somebody that cannot be trusted. Like Mm -hmm. yeah exactly. and i'm I've, i have been working on it that's for sure well hopefully it works out sometimes it's we like can't say know. things we think it's it's oh it's not a big deal but it can be very hurtful for somebody else and vice versa somebody can say something that nah, just casually out of the blue you know but it can be very damaging for somebody and 
having good social skill can really help you see like if there's a change of mood like usually i feel when it's going on i used to struggle a lot with but sometimes you'll feel that the mood change after a certain subject was brought up or a certain conversation or topic was discussed you'll feel that the the room doesn't feel right and then you should start wondering like oh did i do something wrong? or something that is delicate and then ask question like did i say if i mentioned this did that hurt you the person in theory should say yeah it did hurt me then you could be like oh i'm sorry about that no <laughs> admit to your it's... faults it's i think it's a very brave and honorable thing to do you do something bad just admit to it avoid a fight there's no point winning an over something that yeah. you don't find is reasonable or logical if they're going through an emotion you have to respect that even though it doesn't make logic for you now there is some really decisions at the beginning of my relationship i'm more of an emotional type uh i'm more of a logical type if you give me a logical re explanation for your behavior then i'm like oh okay that's that makes sense and i'm not going to be mad anymore but somebody that is more emotional they don't care about your justifications and stuff like that they're hurt whether you did it on purpose or not and they know you didn't do it on purpose they just want to feel understood they need to you need to apologize to them and then you can justify yourself and then maybe maybe it i would say another thing that i didn't consider when i was going through that motion of you know hurting friends you know in that regard is that when i started realizing i was losing everybody i think my behavior was worse Be and that sucks to admit but when you feel like the whole world is falling on you you start getting you start having desperate feelings where you might do things that you may not normally do which would be you know having a fit <laughs> or getting you know yeah. aggressively angry because you don't feel like you're being heard yeah panicking and i would say i admitted that i've done that in the past it is ah, a very hard it. it's a very hard emotion to control especially in my condition which I struggle with that every day. It's more of an extra... It's more of an, like an extra exercise for me to really try to get a hold of again. And it doesn't really help that much when you were, you know, depressed and you're starting to have, you know, anxiety and these things happening. You're taking on the people that do care about you and, you know... I know that feeling. It sucks. You do a lot of irreversible damage. It's when yeah, you're going that's, through a wave of emotion, yeah. you have to recognize, okay, wait, I'm overly angry or I'm panicking. The first thing you need to do, the hardest thing is to recognize you're going through a very difficult moment or you're having a panic attack or not a panic attack, but mm. you're getting like very stressful, anxious, angry. Recognize that you're going through this, take a knee, take deep breath, and then start thinking about it and then try to regain control. But snapping out of that fit probably the hardest thing to do but after that it's easy but yeah, it's like oh i'm sorry i was a real tornado and i broke everything in your house but you know i'm better now well uh, i didn't bad. do that You've done damage <laughs> and you got to assume yeah no i'm not pointing fingers uh, or anything but um i knew somebody that was kind of like that when they were going through emotion they were like real tornadoes. oh i would never vandalize anybody's apartment or house <laughs> no no yeah i know but just like verbally destroying everything you built and you worked on and they're saying like you're an idiot you don't know what you're doing i hate you i don't care about you and then they feel better and they're like oh yeah i'm, I'm sorry i'm i'm fine now I, I i'm sorry for my, what i said i'm like well too bad the damage is done you stole if you're things. you said things to me that i never thought would come out of your mouth you know if you were to let me just say this right now if, especially from me if you are noticing that your emotions are getting too hot for you then yeah i would i suggest you know taking a step back and just going somewhere where you can isolate yourself and put your and just meditate i've learned that when i'm having these moments that's what helps me if I notice that maybe I'm not happy right now, so I'm not going to escalate it any further. And I'm just going to go, you know, you know, remove myself before the situation gets worse. Because I do not want it to get worse. I already made those mistakes. I just just didn't feel hurt. And that's why I did it. But maybe for the longest time I was being heard. And I just didn't understand that or I wasn't paying attention realize. or I, was, or I wasn't yeah. listening. No. To be honest, I don't understand what it's, you guys are talking about. <laughs> yeah. And there's sometimes when, you know, when we, you know, 
you know, make decisions. You know, there's going to be some times where we all make decisions that are not the most, uh, you know, they may not be, you know, good to your friend. Um, like if we made a pretty rash decision, it would, it would definitely not, pro some of them may not like it, but that you can't really stop them from doing it if, you know, even like, even if you think it's the good for you, they may not think it's good for you. Um, like for example, if I was to say, I don't like how I can use this example. I don't like how my mom, when she was going through a situation, she would not, she wouldn't drink alcohol, but she would drink a lot of Coke. Oh. And yeah, like she would go through a whole 24 pack in just one day and get another one for the next. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. That's a lot of sugar and caffeine. <laughs> Jesus. So I was I mean, like, you know, I could tell her like, mom, you need to stop with the Coca-Cola, you know? <laughs> so, but it ain't gonna she ain't gonna listen to me until she you know this is her way of you know cope, coping with whatever happened you know but that's just a small example but sometimes big decisions that we make together sometimes can be a b big impact like you know if, like a, like if we make a decision <laughs> on what to do on here and that we may not like it but sometimes it is the popular vote you know yeah it's a, yeah. What is, would you consider, like, I'm, I have a question for you guys. I'm curious what you think about Would you consider death as a form of rejection? Because that person passed away and you're not in part of their life anymore. I'm just thinking about it now. I'm like, would that be considered a form of rejection? Non voluntary rejection, but you're being cut off from somebody's, you know, Emotional attachment, social... I would say stuff. that rejection, depending on the circumstance. So if I was to say this, if I don't like it when people are like this, this is just me personally. I hate it when people who, well, people who, who have a family member that died and they're like, oh, I wish I spent more time with them when they were alive. I was like, then why didn't you do it when they were alive? I hate that stuff. True. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you didn't care about them when they were alive, but you care now that they're dead. That doesn't... It does not ring well in my head. Does that make sense? Yeah. But no, I feel like that's more... Sense. To me, that's more like self-rejection of yourself. You did that to yourself. Kind of thing. Absolutely. It's like... You should have took the time to, like... If you knew they were... I mean, sometimes people would just out of nowhere just pass away and maybe due to maybe a wreck or something else happening but or accident. you gotta like you have to take time and think about this this way any day you live on this earth could be your last day and you have to love and live your life to the fullest each day and if you want to spend time with let's say family or friends take the time out of your day to go do it because yeah. you never know when something just out of nowhere like car accidents they happen every day People don't want to be in them, but it's because of someone's, you know, unexcusable driving that causes possibly could be a death or it could be shooting be all this stuff. And you have to just spend time with the people you love because you never know when it's going to end. Yeah. Make every day count. You know, it's you got one life to live. You got to make the most out of it. And mm. it might you might be dealing with rejection right now. You might have lost a cold a good friend or anything like that but look ahead there's there's millions of fish in the sea and put yourself out there don't stay in the past too long because you could be missing out on a great opportunity life friendship work opportunities study uh hobbies uh, even love you know you never know what could happen so you know make the most, most out of every single you can as much as possible <laughs> This is why I like to be a goof and I have to smile. I don't, I don't stay on the negative part for too long. And when I'm frustrated, I'm mad because I'm mad. You know, sometimes it happens to me like, oh, I want to be happy right now. <laughs> sometimes it happens you guys, to me. <laughs> I'm about to say, you guys only see me mad like maybe twice or three times ever. Yeah, uh, I saw you I've, once or I've, twice and that was legit. I was like, dude, I would have been pissed as well. <laughs> 
I knew you were mad at me for one thing I didn't do, so yeah, I know. Yeah. Not showing up at the at the top dogs party. I was mad. I let you know about it, and then we discussed. Oh uh, no! About you it, told me you were mad. mad. Yeah, I was mad. I put all this effort and like I put my car through extra wear to get all this equipment to get and it here. I, I feel so bad out. about that too. I know. I know. I forgive you. I'm I'm not mad about it. Oh, thank on. you. I moved on. Water under the bridge. We're all good. Yeah. Water it ain't gonna happen. The, next year, it ain't gonna happen the second time. Nope, you Absolutely better not, not to, because that time I will <laughs> swoop your ass <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna laugh when about you... it too. You didn't come work out with me any time at this con, even though you said you were going. I worked to. out with you once. If if I would have worked out, <laughs> I would have not respected the E six two one rule. I would have not gotten my six hours of sleep. That's the problem. And I haven't oh, worked yeah. out in years. I would like to do it so I can spend more private time with you, Whiplash. I spend a lot more time with fiction than I do with you, and I would love to spend more time with you. I think you're a super sweet person. You care. You're open-minded. You can. We can talk about anything out there, and it's really great. Um, time was kind of missing on my end, but uh, the intention is there, and I will put my money where my mouth is. I will do it next year. I'll try to at least plan one day where we go to the gym. I'll remind you. Hey, that's fine, because trust me, this con, like, it was much more busier than I thought it was going to be this year. Like, it, oh, was, it was exhausting. <laughs> that's the one thing about, like, I love <laughs> FWA, but it keeps getting bigger. And so my plans just, like, I had one plan this year. Okay, besides, like, the panel and everything we did afterwards, like, your party and t Andres' drag show. Everything else, though, like, I had one plan go through this year. I mean, the rest of it, it was just random, like, happenings, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I got them all my plans. I, I didn't expect my plans. I had a lot, and they all came to tuition. I was really happy about it. I didn't expect it. Well, the only thing I didn't do, actually, not, not true. I didn't go to the gym with you. The only thing I missed out. You didn't say you oh, wanted to. No, no, no. I was like Fiction. Like, I know you didn't want to, which is perfectly fine. Like, because I wasn't going to make you two, but I know Fiction works out, so I was going to get Fiction to come. Because I will say this. Every day, I did go to the gym at least for an hour, an hour and a half, and I got my coffee. So that was like it. That was like my plan every morning. <laughs> my yeah. problem with me is that I like sleep well, too much. <laughs> you were sleeping a lot, but you had like sleepless nights as well. So that's why you were sleeping during the day. That's what you explained to me. And it, ma it made sense to me. I should have just fixed my sleep schedule before we went to FWA because... Yes. I, I, <laughs> yes. I thought maybe just sleeping the way we did. Like when you were visiting that it would fix it, but I guess not. <laughs> No, because I went one day up in the middle help. of the night, and you're, you were chilling on your phone. I'm like, it's 3 in the morning. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I didn't say anything, but that's what I thought. <laughs> F Fiction's like me, then. I'm the same way. It's like, I'll I just literally wake up in the middle, phone. and I just text in 3 in the morning. I will literally I be up if on I... my phone, <laughs> then I'll pass out, and then I'll wake up late for work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I forgot to set my alarm. If you wake me up for too long in the middle of the night, I won't be able to go back to sleep. That is it. I've woken up. It's just, I, just, I just took a nap. I can't go back to sleep if you keep me away for more than 10 minutes. Uh, you guys oh, did yeah. not keep me awake when you slept in the living room. You guys were very peaceful and quiet. None of you snored. I think I was the snorer. Mm, I don't remember. I think your white noise was actually louder. I wouldn't play. I was like, can you like bring it down like 10 or 15%? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. But so yeah, yeah, and so to go back to the subject, um, I think our, our time is starting to run out, though. If I'm correct. Yeah, it's been over an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's been over an hour. Okay. Well, there's definitely more thing I'd love to talk about, but I guess we're gonna have to close it for a day. I think we covered quite a lot of subjects. Uh, uh, a lot of things concerning rejection. We kind of drifted uh, on the a side of rejection, bit. but it made. Yes, but it made sense. It's something that related to, you know, rejection, and it had some sort of connection. So I think it was, it was good. I'm really satisfied with this. Um, so I would, for anybody oh, who's let me say this. I'm. I will say this. I also want to add one thing too. If you guys watch this video, go ahead. Hit the like button on here to see. Get, I'll tell you what. Give us about ten likes if you want a part two of this episode. That's a good idea, oh boy. Because I was gonna we can say get more than that. <laughs> I'm just Here's being generous. 
Yeah, what are the, <laughs> do the people listening on Spotify? Are there? Yeah, give us a thumbs up. Want me to go or higher? Or an... <laughs> okay. Higher? Yeah, okay, I'll yeah, say this. If you guys. 200. 200. You want 200? Yeah, 200. Okay, oh, okay. if you. I'm going to do it. If you want a part two of this episode, give us 200 likes on this video. There. <laughs> Guess I don't know. I was gonna say have enough content to make two episodes. <laughs> oh, I we will. Like, we only, well, we will. Okay. We will. <laughs> but I was gonna say though is like I understand like the what I was gonna say like still like learning ourselves like because honestly with me I feel like I actually haven't like fully realized <laughs> everything around me until I was like t- beginning of this year actually I, I slowly I feel like with me I slowly have just like started like understanding everything and now i'm like at that point like my, oh, okay this is what everything happens and what i should do and what i shouldn't do and all that stuff Ugh. but you know we all live and learn that's just a f- way of life live unfortunately <laughs> live and learn part of life i think for me to find as finalize this video i think we're never old well like we're, we're you're only old when you stop learning as long as you keep learning you can get older as a, your body yes but mentally you can still stay young stay open-minded try to find something uh keep yourself busy you know ask people around I don't know where am I going with this. <laughs> or if you want, if you yeah, want to keep your never, mind busy and take your anger out stop. on anything else, just play yeah, Elden Ring. Never stop. Never stop working on yourself. There's oh, always no. something you can improve on. Look for be- feedback. Ask for help. I've consulted with a social worker, and that person was absolutely amazing. She did better work than my psychiatrist did back in the day when I did my depression. She she was talking 50% of the time and I was talking 50% of the time and she gave me a lot of tips and advice. So there's nothing wrong about getting help. Uh, sometimes, you know, life and social relationship, they, it doesn't come with manuals. You need to learn on your own, figure stuff out, seek for help. Some are more gifted and talented than others. I was very, very rejected at school when I was a kid. I really struggled with that. And then I started embracing who I am as a person. I was kind of weird, that weird kid at school. And the moment I start, I was like, yeah, I'm weird. What about it? Then the police, they stopped messing with me and they left me alone. And you know, my social life started getting better. So believe in yourself. You can do this. Stay open-minded. Be open to other people's suggestion, comments. And if people come up to you with like, they're hurt by something you've done, just listen to them. Make them feel like you understand what they're going through. And you'll see your friendship will drastically increase with these people. And you actually end up creating a very strong bond because every fight you get over with makes the relationship stronger. So that's that. (laughs) All right. Well, I guess that concludes today's episode. Thank you guys for joining us on this week's episode. We'll see you guys next week. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. Have a good night. Have a good day.